So, most people are talking about the Fantastic Four. So, we're going to talk about the Fantastic Four. It's been a long, long time that the Fantastic Four has been going. Two separate cartoons, one from the 60s, one from the 90s. Four films. There was one from 94, then there was the 2005 and 2007 films, and then there was the 2015 Fan Fantastic, as I like to call it. I watched all four of the Fantastic Four films. I was going to go and watch all the animated stuff as well, but I thought that's a bit overkill. I'll reference them now and again, but I won't fully go into them. I will start with the 1994 film. This film gets a lot of bad press. The reason it was made was actually just so that somebody could keep the rights to the film. They made the film to say, look, we've made this with the intent of releasing it, but we don't think it's release worthy. We'll, 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 we'll keep the rights and we'll work on a, a better script, a better story, better uh, special effects stuff, and we'll work on it to make it better. And that didn't happen. The 1994 film itself wasn't really that bad. The story, it was a sound story. It worked fairly well for its purpose. Yes, some of the acting was a bit, you know, over the top, but we're, t we're talking mid-90s. Everything was over the top then. It worked for the time. Going back and watching it, now thinking about all the other things that we've seen to this point in time, it's like, well, obviously, it's not as viable there now as it was then. If you watch it constructively, like I try and do with all the things, the characters themselves were fairly spot on. There was a few wee things they changed about Reed and Ben, but, I mean, the first time I watched it, I think, was like 2003, 2004. And I watched it and I remember thinking, this is terrible. But I was I was watching it as a fan at the time, I wasn't watching it constructively, I wasn't saying, well, let's think of the story, how's this, how's that? When I went back and watched it, it's like, yes, the acting's hammed up and cheesy, but it worked for the time. To be honest, there's not that much bad things that I can say about the 1994 Fantastic Four film. It could have been fairly successful if they'd had a bigger budget and were able to make the changes that they wanted to. But like I said, they made the film to keep the rights. They brought in a person who makes films for basically zero. I mean, 1994, you think of other films that come out then, there was Jurassic Park with like $200 million budget. This had like, at most, it had a million, if they were lucky for that meagre amount of money to make that type of film I think was actually really, really good. If you can get your hands on a copy, I think it might even be on YouTube. Give it a watch. It's not that bad. We then move on to the 2005 and 2007 the Fantastic Four movies. For all intents and purposes, were a financial success. The reason they didn't go on with a third one, which they had planned, was the backlash that they got about how they changed Galactus in the second movie. Uh, but with with the first movie, it was their origin story. Obviously, they change things here and there. It's what, it's what they do. Doctor Doom, his character was completely changed and people didn't really like it. They accepted it but they didn't really like it. I mean, the actor they had playing him was fantastic. He'd done a great job with the way that they wanted it to go. And I can't fault him for that, but it was it was down to the, the writing and the directing and how they were putting it together. It was it seemed to be that they weren't like comic book fans. They didn't understand Doom's motivation. It seemed to be that they just wanted this businessman who becomes a supervillain. They were basically turning them into Lex Luthor. The origin story from the first film, it tells the story of 
how they get their powers and how Ben Grimm has this existential crisis because he's now just a thing and it's about them understanding their powers and how they work and how they can work with their powers. Again, there's a lot of comedy things that happen, uh, I think just for the sake of a joke. It, it gets a lot of bad press, but financially it was a success, which is why it got the sequel that it did, which is where this franchise had its downfall. When people heard that the Silver Surfer and Galactus were going to be in this film, people were thinking, this is going to be great. And then Galactus shows up as a cloud. If you're a fan of comic books, you know Galactus is not a cloud. They had the budget to be able to do something on a large scale to create something that wasn't a large cloud that looked like an, an arsehole sucking up planets. They had Doug Jones as the actual Silver Surfer and they had Lawrence Fishburne as the voice which was tremendous casting. I mean they were setting it up for the sequel with the end credit sequence and the Silver Surfer, the surfboard moves and he opens his eye. There was going to be a third one until the backlash came. So from 2007 to 2015 they left the Fantastic Four alone and then we get to Fan Fantastic which changed the origin story completely. They didn't go into space, they, they went to another dimension. Yes, there has been dimension hopping in Fantastic Four comics, but the cosmic rays that gave them their powers came from space. They didn't even go into where it was they were. They didn't give it a name. They rushed the story to get to where they were to build up their own universe. There was going to be crossovers, I believe, with some X-Men things coming in later. Uh, there was a sequel planned. The way that they tried to build the story was rushed. And again, they changed Doctor Doom. His part in the film and the story in general was fairly minimal. When you've got a character like Doctor Doom, he used them and he wasn't used enough in that film. I'm not saying that if they had used Doom that they could have made it a success. I don't think this film was going to be a success. There wasn't enough emphasis on the characters. They decided to show how the military would come in and use these people as weapons and how they could go to this place and make soldiers all super soldiers. If that's how they were going to go, they should have shown more of how they were going to be doing that and how the Fantastic Four were going to stop them. They didn't have a complete story. They started it, they stagnated in the middle and it's like, where do we go? Oh, we've got this story, we've got that story, we've got that, we've got that. Let's just do them all. Fox were able to build up a universe with the X-Men. This was their potential to do it with the Fantastic Four. And people always say, oh, it was, it was terrible acting. So, uh, it wasn't terrible acting. There's only so much that an actor can do to push through the story. It's not going to make the story better if the story's not good to start with. The Fantastic Four have been stuck in this loop. Here's Fantastic Four, and then here's Doctor Doom, they're big bad. You don't need to always start with Doctor Doom. Doom needs to be built up in more than just one film. You can't just say, here he is, this is his powers go. If the MCU want to get the Fantastic Four right, they can't just throw in Doctor Doom and say, this is who the Fantastic Four are going against. They need to bring in somebody that will challenge them to an extent and then they can push through that. It needs to show that they are this family. 
that can overcome all these adversities before you have them going up against Doctor Doom. I think this is really the, the last chance that the Fantastic Four are going to have to be in a big budget film because if they don't get it right this time they should leave the Fantastic Four to the comics and animation. Hopefully we can all discuss a good, well made, perfectly cast, good story, non-butthole Fantastic Four film in the future. Bye.